Yes, even worse than Will Mushamp's dumpster fire of a final season in Gainesville. Speaking of Mushamp, the former UF head coach new team, South Carolina, played host to his old one in Columbia Saturday afternoon. An ungracious host they were, it turned out, as the Gamecocks secured its seventh win of the season against three losses, getting past the Gators in a 2,821 victory. The Gators actually had the opportunity to tie the game late after taking over with three minutes left in the fourth quarter, but a Felipe Franks interception with 106 remaining dashed any hopes of a comeback. Now at 36 on the season, the Gators are sitting on their worst record through nine games since way back in 1979. That squad, the first under Charlie Pell, was 09 en route to a winless 0101 campaign. The 2013 Gators under Mushamp were 45 on their way a 48 season, losing its last seven games to clear the way for the head coach firing and the hiring of Jim McElwain. McElwain, of course, was fired earlier this year. This year's Gators have now lost five games in a row, their longest such streak since the 2013 season. One play in particular in the latest loss perfectly encapsulates the lost 2017 season. The 2017 Florida Gators you land, to add insult to injury for Gator Nation Mushamp now has the Gamecocks in sole possession of second place in the SEC East, which would be its best conference showing since the 2013 season. Yeah, that'll leave a mark. Stakes Haven been this high for the Deep South's oldest rivalry in years and both number 1 Georgia and number 10 Auburn are putting together an effort worthy of the big stage on Saturday by staging a pretty good first half of football on the Plains, in a game with serious college football playoff implications on both sides. It was the Tigers who managed to grab the edge at the midway mark though as they took a 167 lead into the locker room of the closely fought contest. That margin could have been even larger for Gus Malzahn's team if they were able to convert some long drives from field goals into touchdowns. Still, given the front seven they were facing off against, they'll take it at this point as Kerryon Johnson powered his way to a 76-yard rushing effort. Quarterback Jarrett Stidham provided a nice balance to the offensive attack with his arm two in throwing for 125 yards to seven different receivers, none with a better catch than Darius Slayton's 42-yard touchdown with just over four minutes left in the second quarter. Going into halftime without the lead is a different situation than Georgia is used to this season and comes as a surprise after they marched right down the field on their opening possession to cap off an eight-play, 70-yard touchdown drive. Young signal caller Jake Fromm has been solid in his biggest test of the year, but managed 86 yards through the air on just four completions. The Bulldogs' terrific backfield tandem of Sony Michel and Nick Chubb were both kept in check to the tune of only 39 yards on the ground, but the latter did pass legendary Auburn tailback Bo Jackson for fourth place on the SEC career rushing list in the first quarter. As Tigers fans with a memory of what happened in the game against LSU will tell you, this one is far from over for both teams. It's been a while since we've seen a heavyweight fight in the SEC between top 10 teams and the second half should cap off quite the rivalry game given how both sides played through the first two quarters. When you lose the football three times, you are not supposed to hold a 10-point lead at halftime. But such is the case so far this afternoon for Wisconsin, the last unbeaten team in the Big Ten. Wisconsin has used a strong defensive effort to overcome three turnovers and leads Iowa 177 at the half in Madison. Iowa actually scored first in this one, with the defense striking on the first possession of the game. On third and 13 from the Wisconsin 36-yard line, Alex Hornbrick had his pass picked off by Iowa's Joshua Jackson, who returned it 43 yards for a touchdown in the first 90 seconds of the game. If that sounds a tad familiar, that's because Iowa returned an interception for a score against Ohio State last week. But this game has been much more defensive throughout, as opposed to the scoring burst seen last week in Kinnick Stadium. Wisconsin came back with a field goal on their second defensive series to calm things down a bit. As expected, the game quickly became a chess match of field position with punt after punt from both teams, and a second interception from the Iowa defense mixed in. In the second quarter though, Wisconsin took the lead on an in-around play with Kendrick Pryor springing down the left side of the field 25 yards for a score. The Badgers added a late touchdown before halftime after taking the ball over at the Iowa 26-yard line after a punt from the back of the end zone. Hornerbrook connected with Pryor as the receiver climbed a ladder to come down with the ball to put Wisconsin up 177. 
Iowa's offense has not been able to get anything going and has just one first down at the break. If they can't get going, they will be going home with a loss while the Badgers keep hoping to make a playoff-worthy statement. Follow at Kevin on KFB any hope that the appearance of Clemson on the other side of the line of scrimmage would inspire a Florida State-like performance from these underachieving Seminoles has gone unfulfilled through one half in Death Valley East. Clemson holds a 170 lead over Florida State at the break. Both of Clemson's scores came with help from Florida State. The first was set up by a fumble by Florida State quarterback James Blackman, which Clemson's Trey Lamar recovered at the FSU 20-yard line. Kelly Bryant rushed in from two yards out to put the Tigers up at the 251 mark of the first quarter. Clemson threatened to add a second score midway through the second quarter, but Travis Feaster fumbled the ball at the FSU 1, and Demarcus Christmas hopped on the ball for Florida State. However, Clemson forced a punt from inside the Florida State end zone, and Ray Ray McLeod returned the boot 35 yards to the FSU 28. Travis Etienne raced in for Clemson's second score on play later. Bryant nearly gave away another red zone fumble on Clemson's final drive of the half, with three Florida State defenders touching a loose football inside the FSU 10. But Bryant had hustled all three of them to get the ball back, allowing Alex Spence to bang in a 26-yard field goal with 139 left before the break. Bryant completed 12 of 15 passes in the half but for just 80 yards. He leads the club with 13 carries for 41 yards and a score, and as a team Clemson has rushed 26 times for 104 yards. Blackman battled through a miserable half, completing three of 11 passes for 23 yards while being credited with minus 23 rushing yards with a fumble on five carries. Cam Akers was the lone bright spot for the Seminoles' offense with 40 yards on nine carries. All in all, Florida State gained 42 yards and achieved three first downs in the half. Florida State will receive to start the second half. It was another week with a bit of an offensive backhand fifth for number 15 Oklahoma State 82, 52 Big 12, and this time they came out on top of a wild one. The Cowboys managed to pull through in the fourth quarter to secure a 4,942 win at number 21 Iowa State 64, 43 Big 12 to keep their Big 12 championship hopes a. The wild fourth quarter began with none other than Alan Lazard coming up with an incredible touchdown catch. As the ball soared to the end zone, Lazard tipped the ball with his left hand with a defender on him, and he caught the ball with his right hand as he fell to the ground for the go-ahead score. The Lazard touchdown gave Iowa State a 3,531 lead, and Oklahoma State had to settle for a field goal on the ensuing possession to create a one-point game. A little more than a minute later, Iowa State expanded the lead to eight points on a 14-yard run by David Montgomery after a couple of big passes by Zeb Noland to Trevor Ryan and an unnecessary roughness penalty on the Cowboys moved the ball quickly down the field. Oklahoma State responded once more by orchestrating a 75-yard drive for a touchdown. Mason Rudolph connected in the end zone with Marcel Atterman formed 30 yards out on a third and 22. After a couple of holding penalties in the end zone on 12 point conversion attempts by the Pokes, Justice Hill powered his way in for a short pickup to tie the game at 4,242 with just under six minutes to play. Oklahoma State took the lead on a 19 yard pass from Rudolph to Dylan Stoner with 347 to play. Iowa State moved the ball into the red zone in the final minutes, but Oklahoma State picked off a pass in the end zone and had the instant replay booth uphold the call when it appeared there might have been simultaneous possession between Oklahoma State's A.J. Green and Iowa State receiver Marchie Murdoch. Oklahoma State has already lost games to both Oklahoma and TCU, the frontrunners in the Big 12 championship game hunt. Even though the Sooners and Horned Frogs play today to guarantee one of them loses, Oklahoma State still must keep the pressure on and hope for some help around the conference these next few weeks. Iowa State might have seen a chance to play for the Big 12 championship fall through the cracks in their home finale. Iowa State will wrap up the season on the road with back-to-back -back games at Baylor and Kansas State. One win is needed to clinch Iowa State's first winning season since 2009. Follow at Kevin on Kefi.